So as we know, 2018 is Treyarch Shift Call of Duty, but what does that mean for zombies in the game in general? Well, that's what we're going to be discussing on today's video. So what's up, guys? It's General Gerbil. Let's get right into Treyarch 2018. So first off, before I get started with my discussion, I just want to say thank you so much for 1,000 subscribers. It means a lot. It kind of did just happen overnight. Uh, so thank you so much for that, it means a lot for your continued support. If you do want to follow me on any other social media, all the links are down in the description. But other than that, we're just going to get on with the video in its entirety. So when it comes to zombie games, in our three year development cycle previously, we've had Infinite Warfare Zombies, now Nazi Zombies, which we're about to get our first DLC for, and then this year we'll have Treyarch Zombies in November. So what does that mean for the game mode and how they're going to take it? So if you remember all the way back to Black Ops 3, the ending of that storyline, we saved our four characters, they went back to Primus and they continued the cycle about to do what we've all done again but obviously we can't bring those back in the newer game so it means what maps are we going to see what player characters we're going to see and who we're going to be able to play as so in the comics we know there's a lot of emphasis on mob of the dead and jason Mundar has said that himself that there's going to be like something in the future for mob of the dead when he was interviewed by jc backfire but we also have the transit crew which we could also potentially see back and other than that we have like just random other players like the CDC crew and you know those kind of agent things that we saw but I don't think they'll come back because obviously they were just placeholders but it all depends on the map that comes back and the storyline that they go with because obviously we're done with the original four but I think they might pull a Origins where we had the transit crew for the whole of Black Ops 2 and then at the end they were like oh by the way here's your original four back just for you to enjoy I think they could do something like that uh, in Black Ops 4 as we're calling it now but I believe that's a potential but there's also the uh, DLC map that they always come out with the, with the season pass and the on disc uh, map which we're going to talk about as well. So when it comes to on disc map I'm not too sure what they could be doing. There are a lot of people that are saying it's going to be uh, London because of the disappearing uh, new paper clipping in Horizon Draft. But when it comes to DLC, the season pass map, I believe there could be a strong chance that we get Mob of the Dead. Because like I said, just uh, Jason Mundell said that they've had plans for it, they've got plans for it, that's why he didn't play it in Zombie Chronicles. But I feel that they could open Mob of the Dead up, maybe even with the transit crews, we know they're frozen underneath Mob of the Dead. Uh, and change it up a little bit because they had to cut off parts of Alcatraz when they first made that map. They had to, because of the disc limits and the, the DLC sizes, they had to cut off parts of Alcatraz and say we need to lose this. Uh, I believe in like the next generation of consoles they could open it up a bit more so that's why I think they could be bringing back Mob of the Dead. It's a very important map storyline wise and also on the next generation of consoles it just opens it up more for the possibilities of the map size, the weapons, the things they can do with that which means we'll also see the return of Brutus hopefully. But other than that I think the DLC map will maybe be Mob of the Dead, I'm not too sure. As for other DLCs, um, I'm not sure, people, someone's mocked up this image here, uh, people saying that it could be a Zombie Chronicles 2 for DLC 5 where we get the Transit Crew maps and things like Nuketown 5 and that which didn't quite have the Transit Crew but they had like the celebrity cameos like Call of the Dead. I don't think that will happen just unless they change the characters that are in the maps, I personally don't think that will happen because obviously it would mean getting the celebrities back in to like do new dialogue or remastering the dialogue. They totally could, they totally could just rip the sounds from the original maps, remaster them, make them more HD and put them in the map but personally I don't think they're going to do that uh, just because those maps didn't really play anything to the storyline. That's why the certain maps were chosen for Zombies Chronicles because they were important to the storyline itself. So Call of the Dead and Five and that, they were kind of just side maps that were, weren't necessarily fillers, but they, they were side maps that were kind of cool, but they didn't play any vital part to the storyline like we did with our original four. So as for maps and DLC, not too sure what they're going to do. Pretty sure they're going to bring Map Mob of the Dead and Zombie Chronicles 2. It's looking pretty negative on that. Now, other than maps, we also have the gameplay side of things, which we need to look at and how they're going to innovate that. Now, I did see this post on Reddit, which I actually kind of agree of a lot. So this person says the, the thread is like your expectations for Black Ops 4, what do you expect, what do you want from it. And this person here says, uh, honestly, I just hope we go back to the time pre-Mob of the Dead where they stopped forcing Easter egg uh, for every single map that came out. Now, I do agree with that. I personally, I, I love the Easter eggs. I, I, I'm, I always go down to do them. I'm always ready to do them. I love doing them. I do them even after I've done them just for fun and perks and stuff. But personally, I think the main focus has shifted from being a zombies game to being an Easter egg hunt where, you know, it's suddenly when the map comes out, it's not about playing the map and enjoying the map and find out all the cool little things. It's like a race for the Easter egg, which is cool because it does bring the community together and it does give us all something to search for and a, a big, like, it gives us a communal sense of achievement. But at the same time, it's not always about the Easter egg. And it's just about looking at the map, playing the map and enjoying it. Um, and then they go on to say, like, um, buildables, thousand kill wonder weapons, alternative ammos. And then 
Something that I hadn't even thought of till I read this was make war weapons useful again. I don't actually remember a time in Black Ops 3 where I'm actually buying war weapons because the starting weapons and the ultimate ammo types and that, they're just so strong that you can just go from go from the start, especially if you've done the super easter as well, you get the RK5 so you can just go uh, until you hit the box and then you can just use the box and stuff. So war weapons I think do need to be useful again because we always forget that zombies is about like surviving and trying to do your best so when we were back in the world of war days you know you you thought you know I better buy this car because it's going to make me help survive and you know I better buy this Thompson because it's going to get me more points to open this door to, to do this so war weapons I think is a major part of zombies that a lot of people tend to forget but I think they do need to bring in another use for them other than just you know oh I've run out of ammo on this pack punch gun better buy this gun so I can just keep killing zombies so I can upgrade it. Now certain things on this list that this guy's wrote I don't personally agree with so he's talking about RNG elements uh, to keep the game fresh which I agree with that part like you've got to keep the game moving you've got to keep something to stop a player from training in one area in a certain time for a certain amount of time. Uh, so he, he refers to the moon excavator saying like all oh, that kind of stuff where you'd have to stop training, go and stop it and then go back. But then he also says permanent loss of an area would be fantastic or only under certain conditions can you open an area. The second part of that I really like, I, I really enjoy the idea of you can only open this door uh, if you've got like this, say, say for moon for example, you can only open the biodome if you've got the labs and the spawn room decompressed because you know in a law sense you players need somewhere to breathe or something like that. But then a permanent loss of an area is a different one because a lot of people get to know maps, they get to know routes and, and places they can train and places where like they feel a bit safe. So if one of your safety zones is one of these areas where you know it's going to be lost and you know you're gonna, it's going to like crumble down or it's going to blow up or something, it's going to put a lot of players on edge and not everyone is a strong confident zombies player so not being big headed but I feel if I get trapped in an area I can easily get out of there. I can find somewhere else to go and continue my game as normal but if you're not as strong or as confident you might be training in one of these areas that's going to go down and you know you're going to get your audio cue or your visual cue saying like oh by the way you better move because this is like your flashing lights and origins you know get out of the way because the zombie the robots coming to step on you and then you might panic a bit and then say if you're on like round 24 and you don't realize and you blow it up or it gets trodden on or whatever and you go down that's going to be a real bummer and the permanent loss of that area would really kick you in the guts because you know you spent all this time playing it up to round 24 so i think maybe permanent loss of an area is something to stray away from but areas under certain conditions is something that i actually agree with but then underneath that he says um i'd love the ability to upgrade perks for a ridiculous price while i get that he just did say a ridiculous price i don't agree with upgrading perks because obviously six hits as he puts here for jug it's kind of a lot when you're training, I normally get hit three, four times unless I go down, obviously, with Jug. Uh, f too few and far between, so I don't really see the need to upgrade Jug. Just, it sounds bad, but get good, get better at the game, because you shouldn't really need to upgrade it so many times that you need six hits. But then, six hits on Jug, fair enough, but then what are you going to do for quick, re uh, quick revive or speed color or double tap or electric cherry? How are you going to upgrade those? But that's maybe something they should stray away from, because it's not really needed really if you know how to play zombies you don't need to upgrade your perks really and the final thing that i'm going to mention is this last thing that it puts here about the wonder weapons i agree there should be multiple wonder weapons per map sometimes if it's a smaller map then you can get away with having one like you know the giant with the wonder waffle things like that but uh black ops 3 as you said did it very well um there should be no clear best wonder weapon uh and again i can't agree with this guy more uh, he, the way it was handled in zexpo machine was really good you built your wonder weapon and then you had it and it was quite powerful up until a certain point but then the upgrade process was ridiculous and then you go onto the easter egg and as he says here building and upgrading the weapon should not be part of a requirement for an easter egg because for some players they don't want to do that like when i first tried the z spono shimmer easter egg um i didn't know how to upgrade the uh the kt4 so when i had to go on this long hunt for a youtube video on how to do it and then i found out it took me you know 20 30 minutes to do it and it was just a bit of a, a joke because I didn't want to do it. I just wanted to get the Easter egg done and get out of there and do the next one. So I agree, they should never be in an Easter egg. Fair building the Wonder Weapon, maybe, or like obtaining the Wonder Weapon, but upgrading it never should be part of it, to be honest. The only time I can think that it's acceptable is again in Moon with the um, wave gun where you have to upgrade it to shoot the thing off the top of the antenna. That's fine because that's such a small step and the upgrade process was regular. You know, you put it in the, the pack punch, you get it back. So upgraded, that's fine because 
just like a, upgrading a regular gun, but having to go underwater and plant and water, uh, plant underwater, and then you know, go back into a cage and go underground and kill so many zombies, and that's ridiculous. That's just that's taking it a bit too far. Uh, the bows in D, again, as he said, was a good way to handle it. You had four separate ones that were quite easy to do, but again, there should be no clear one. And the final thing, uh, the box wonder weapon, the wonder weapon should always be in the box, sorry, I can't agree more. Um, the way they did that in Black Ops 2, personally, I really liked where you built your wonder weapon, and then as soon as you picked it up off your workbench, it went into the box. I think it does it on Shadows of Evil as well with the Pop and Servant. I can't agree with that more, because that means if you built this one weapon and you pick it up and it disappears from the workbench, if that player dies, there's nowhere else to pick it up from. So if it goes into the box, another player can get it, or you know you can trade it out and say, oh, you know, you have to go with it. So I agree with that completely for the next Black Ops game. But personally, those are some of my thoughts and what I agree with and what I don't agree with from what I've seen around the community uh, for the next Treyarch game, Black Ops 4 is raw calling it. But I want to know what you think, so if you've got any thoughts or suggestions of what they should do in the next game, feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and leaving a like on the video. Other than that, I've been John Rodrable. Peace out.